Thanks. Danny LaRue, The Athletic. The last couple of years, you guys have had a lot of salary cap flexibility, but then this year, you know, you had the minimum contracts, the middle-level exception. How did you change your, your approach and preparation, and then, of course, as July started? Yeah, we had 10. I didn't, I didn't know what free agency would look like once the dust settled. A lot of them, we had the bird rights with Kevin and Steph. Uh, Kevin, we had non-bird, but Andre Iguodala, Sean, helps, gives, you, gives you an upper hand to re-signing your own players. But... Um, Fortunately for us, a lot of the guys wanted to come back, uh, wanted, to, wanted to try to make another run at it, and like playing for Steve, I, I assume like being in the organization, like playing with each other, so anytime you can at least win a tie with your own free agents, it puts you in a pretty good position. But again, unrestricted free agency, which most of them were, I could have been sitting up here today or, or, or we could have had a completely different team. You just, you really don't know year to year, as you can see. The landscape of the league, it changes fast. Um, no one could have predicted a lot of things that have transpired. But for us, um, thankfully, we've got our core back and hopefully added some guys that can, that can help us. Connor. Of how uh, Kevin Durant handled his Twitter snafu, everything that went into that, and then the apology. I thought he handled it well. I spoke to Kevin. Um, look. You know, when you're in the media, uh, and you guys are in the media as well, we all have our moments that we might regret and say something we feel like we shouldn't have said. And, and at that point, when it's done, you, you own it, which you did. You apologize. Um, I like to apologize to people uh, directly, which, which he did. Uh, and you move on, and you learn, really. And that's what we spoke about. You know, yes, you made a mistake. First of all, recognize that. Don't blame anybody else. Um, apologize to the people you offended. And then look back on it in the rear of your mirror and say, how can I avoid that? That's the best way, in my opinion, to deal with, with a situation like that. And that's what he did. And so somebody's going to say something today. Might be me, might be Steve, could be a player that probably doesn't come off right. So what do you do? You, you said it. You say, yeah, that was me. And then you say, I'm sorry to the people that I didn't mean it to come off that way. And, and you move on. And, and as, you get in, as you get more into it, hopefully those things diminish. And that would be the goal uh, with Kevin. But he's got a great heart. Uh, we're lucky to have him on this team. And um, I'm excited to see what he's going to do this year. Ann? Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. Bob, uh, are you do, you, do you know what the situation will be in terms of a White House invitation, what the um, team will decide, and how that decision will be made? Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. But I, I think what we're going to focus on in the near term is the process we employ to make that decision. So we've had discussions with the White House. Uh, no decision has been reached on our side. And the plan is to meet with the team, ownership, Joe Lacob, myself, uh, Steve will certainly be involved, and have a real honest dialogue about it. It's not as clear as, um, well, I, I assume some people think it is and some people think it isn't. And so from our opinion, my opinion, it deserves a proper forum. It deserves the right amount of thought. And so when we make the decision, we at least put in the right amount of time to make it. And that's the next goal for us, and whether that happens in the next few days or week. But we, we understand there's a time sensitivity to it, but there is no deadline. And so we're going to get in a room, and I think with our coach, certainly, and the relationship we have with our players and front office and ownership, I think we'll get some honest discourse in there. And that's what we want. Um, if someone doesn't feel like they want to say something in front of the team, then we might talk to that individual uh, alone. But coming out of that, I feel like we will have made a decision as a team. We'll certainly let all you guys know um, when that's done. But I can't sit here and tell you what it will be. You guys have seen what's been said. I have as well. Um, this will be the first time we've actually sat together. Uh, we still haven't done it uh, today. The team has not congregated. We're going to have a dinner tonight. But since we won the championship, no, none of us have been together besides the parade, and we weren't even in the same room then. So I think it deserves an in-person conversation. Um, and then what happens, happens. We'll see. Chris. Chris Haynes, ESPN. How you doing, Bob? Good. Has the, um, in, in your opinion, just looking around the league, the landscape and the positions, has this, the traditional center position, has it kind of been weaned out as we see um, – JaVale, he's been working on three-pointers this year. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. Okay. He, yeah, I know he's been working on them. I don't know if that's going <laughs> to – That's a, ask Steve. He'll, he's I'll up after that. me. I'll do that. But, yeah. but what's, your, what's your take on that position and 
a lot of coaches are trying to stretch the game out, have guys more so on the perimeter. Yeah. Well, you're right. The league has changed. It's changed in many ways, and certainly the center position has evolved into something different. I don't know. Who, I don't know if I don't know how that began, but it, it's here. And so, if you look at our roster, you could probably determine six guys that can play the five, or or more traditional now five. David West didn't start his career as a five. He is clearly a five now. Uh, could he play four? Certainly, yes. San Antonio still plays a couple bigs. There are teams that do it. Uh, New Orleans may have to do it this year. Um, bottom line is you play your best players. But the center position, um, as you mentioned, Chris, is different now. And so you've got to defend. You've got to switch the pick and roll sometimes. I mean, a perfect center spaces the floor. That's, that's really hard to find. Um, although you mentioned JaVel may be a guy, that, <laughs> which I think is unlikely. But... Um, in any event, the center position, uh, because of the shooting, really, the three-point line, and you've seen some of these teams, and I think we're one of them, uh, at the forefront of spacing the floor. I think Mike D'Antoni in, in uh, Phoenix began that process, and you've seen the Spurs play pace and space, and obviously what the Rockets have done. So everybody, I think, realizes the importance of operating in space, which makes it hard to play two bigs that, that don't stretch the floor. So that's where you see a lot of guys falling into that five uh, position spot where they might have been fours four, five, six years ago. Hey, Bob, right in front of you. Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Uh, signing or re-signing a player is a complicated thing. There's a lot of factors involved. But when you reflect back on um, the Andre Iguodala negotiations, what would you say is the key to being able to uh, bring him back? Probably a lot of keys, Phil. I mean, I, I don't know that there was one. Uh, you could, you, could, you, could, you could put it all together, I think, and, and putting it all together is, I think, what got him back. It wasn't one thing. I don't know that it was just money. I don't know that it was just wanting to stay in the Bay Area and be in this community. I think it was all of it combined. His relationship with Steve Kerr, his relationship with his coaches. He's had great success here, uh, great success here uh, individually and, and as, a, as a teammate of, of the guys he plays with. But, you know, Andre... A lot of players, uh, as the moment gets bigger, sometimes they get smaller. And Andre is the antithesis of that. When the moment gets bigger, he gets bigger. And you've seen him play in the playoffs. And when you have a player that you, has proven uh, the ability to compete on a big stage, you don't want to lose those type of players. And certainly his leadership, um, who he is in the locker room, who he is in all the moments that no one sees on the bench, uh, around, in the community, um, you, you really want to hang on to those guys pretty tight. And fortunately, I think it was reciprocated, and he felt, he felt good about coming back. But Andre deserved all the attention he got in free agency. He would help any team win. Uh, if you look at his history, all the teams he's been on have been pretty good defensively. Um, and he's a competitor. And so I'm happy for him now. He's a two-time two champion. Bob, um, you're obviously very close with Steve. Uh, I know he was going searching for some answers health-wise this summer. In your discussions with him, I mean, how confident are you that you know he's maybe to a point where you feel like 82 games and the playoffs, he's going to be fine getting through that? That's good. I mean, he'll answer. He's going to be up here as well. Um, but he looks good to me. Feels good. Um, you know, coming into camp two years ago, he couldn't he couldn't get through camp, and that's when Luke um, took over and did did what he did. So. He looks good. He, looks, he feels good, good spirits. He has looked this summer for some solutions, and I'll let him answer that. Um, but in our minds, in my mind, I think in his mind, it, he's, he's coaching our entire season, and it's the same way we went into last year. And, and him having to step aside in the playoffs was pretty unexpected for him and us. But, but again, if that happens, we'll deal with it. Mike Brown did a tremendous job, and he's back on our staff. And we don't, we don't look at Mike as a fallback guy at all. He's, he's been tremendous as the lead assistant. When we needed him as the head coach, he was there. And um, all things are positive with Steve. Uh, is, he, is, he, is he all the way there? I don't know. You'd have to ask him that. But I think he's going in the right direction. Second row. Hi, Katie Baker from The Ringer. Um, down in Southern California, there's a new GM who came from the agency side. And I'm just curious, um, when you made that transition, what you kind of remember most is um, you know, being the, the biggest change and uh, joining a front office and what surprised you the most to move to the other side? Um, you know, I, 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 well, I was actually not ready to be a GM. When I was named general manager or even when I was assistant general, I was kind of frightened. Um, I don't think you can know anything about a job until you've done it. 
just like your job or anybody's job, I had no sense of what the job required. I, I actually thought, in talking to my wife, I thought it would be easier than being an agent, and I was wrong. Um, I was completely wrong. So I, I, it, it allowed me to respect my peers, the other general managers, and look at them in a much different light as when I was an agent. I, I thought they were responsible for certain things, but sitting in the chair that I sit in now, I realize how off I was. Just like if I got your job, I would have no idea how hard that is. Um, but, you know, as you, as you get into it, you get better. Um, just like when you go to college, your freshman year, you don't know how much to study. You don't know how much to go out. You don't know how much to spend in, if you're in a sport. But by the time you're a senior, you feel a little bit better about where you're dedicating your time. I feel like that comes with experience. But when I started, I, was, it was, I wasn't very good. I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest. Mark? Hey, Bob, uh, Mark Medina, Mercury News. Um, with, you, with the specific free agent signings with Nick Young and Omri Caspi, what do you expect out of them with this group? Well, you know, it's, it, it, Steve says this well. I mean, you want to inject new life into a team that's trying to continue to succeed, and, and, and both Nick and Omri, I think, uh, provide one area of scoring. That's why we like them. They stretch the floor. They can shoot the three. But also, um, different type of energy. I mean, Nick Young, who you covered, Mark, um, you know what I like about Nick, similar to Kevin, is they, they just love basketball. You can't get Nick Young away from basketball if you tried. Omri Caspi, another kind of infectious personality, highly respected. If you guys, I'm sure you'll get a chance to talk to him or cover our team. Um, but for us, as far as basketball and, and tactically shooting, uh, we didn't do a great job. I think if you look at our team last year, our bench, um, prior to putting Kevin in that role in the playoffs or Clay, when we went strictly to the bench, whether it was Andre, Sean, um, sometimes David West, it, it wasn't a lot of natural scores. So we felt like, let's go try and find a guy that can score by himself, that can shoot. Um, so hopefully, you know, but look, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. But the idea with those two guys was scoring off the bench and shooting off the bench. Same. Hey, Bob. Sam Amick, USA Today. Um, two quick ones for you. Championship teams wind up pushing back against complacency. Last summer, you guys are trying to come off a loss, and then you add Kevin, so the dynamic is different. How do you attack that this year? And, and then also with Kevin, when did you get a sense from him that he was going to be willing to give some money back? And as a GM who's been doing this for a minute now, you know, how much easier did that make your job? Yeah. Um, first question about What's, what, what, what will motivate this team? I mean, Steve's, Steve's unique. I mean, we're fortunate to have Steve as our coach because he's won seven championships. So, I mean, even saying that, it just, it's, it's, very, it's kind of surreal for me to uh, kind of coexist with somebody that's had that kind of success. But he's able to provide the proper perspective to the players as far as challenging them each day, right? Um, being professional throughout the regular season, not discounting. A lot of times you'll hear or, or, or people will say the regular season doesn't matter. That's not something we subscribe to here. Yes, we've, we've rested guys in the past, but that's not to dilute what we feel about the regular season. So it's challenging our players as a team individually. Um, we've got some very professional assistant coaches. We've got some very professional players. I mean, Draymond Green, he doesn't want to lose any games, um, no matter whether it's preseason or not. So some of it's built in as far as competitiveness. Um, and so that's, that's what I hope motivates us uh, and winning. And, and, and look, a lot of these guys have lost an NBA championship, so they don't want to feel that again either. Um, to your next question, which I'm totally drawing a blank on right now, which was Kevin. Kevin, right. Um, you know, Kevin was interesting. As we headed into free agency, I, I spoke to the guys and said, look, I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to keep all our players. I just don't know. What, I had an idea of what they might command. I figured Steph would, we figured Steph would cost what he did, but... We weren't sure what, really with Sean and Andre whether we'd be able to retain him or not. And so after free agency began, I, and, and Kevin's one of these guys that loves to, to know what's going on. And I said, look, I don't, he said, what's happening? I said, I don't know what's going to happen with these guys, um, especially Andre, because it was kind of in the wind. And he said, well, what do you want me to do? And I said, I just want you to come back. I mean, you know, he'd already mentioned very early that I don't need to, be a full max guy, I will be a non-bird guy, which allowed us to keep Andre's and Sean's bird rights and all these other guys. So already he was taking a discount. Um, but beyond that, he said, well, you know, what else do, needs to happen? And, I, and, and you know, look, um, you have to look in someone, someone's eyes if they tell you that because you really want to believe that that's real. 
right? Because Kevin Durant deserves to make all the money he, he wants. He's one, he's one of the best players in the NBA. Um, so when he said that, you know, to be honest, I, we wanted to make sure it was real and kept saying it, saying it. But, but again, knowing that he would come in at the number he did and saying it with the conviction he did allowed us to be a little bit more aggressive on Andre and Sean and, and actually even to go out and get a Nick Young. Um, it is unusual. Um, you know, it says some of who he is because I do think all he wants to do is win. And at some point in life, money is not, it's not a driver. We all should get paid what we deserve. But I, I think as you move through it, a championship will mean a lot more to our players than how much, how much money they made in their NBA careers. All right, two last ones for Bob. Start with Tim here first. Tommy, the athletic Bob, uh, you lost Jerry, lost Travis. It was a while ago. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know of any hirings you've made to replace them. How has that e made, a, you know, caused an evolution in the front office? Has the front office going to work the same? How, how is it different now? And how, what plans do you have for this? So, Tim, we, we, we took a step and to think about that and see what the right thing to do was. Um, and we, we myself, um, wanted to be deliberate about it. And both of those things happened around the same time. Uh, right around the finals or r r shortly thereafter, or Travis was right before. Um, both were fantastic, right? We're not where we are without Jerry. We're not where we are without Travis. You know, I talk to those guys every day when they were here pretty much. Um, so they'll be missed. Uh, Larry Harris, who is also an assistant GM, is going to step into Travis's role in many ways. Um, Nick Uran is going to do some pro personnel uh, in, in, a, in addition to what he does with Steve. So that'll be a good filler. Um, and then we'll just look. I mean, my belief is always to hire a person instead of a resume. So if a, an individual um, catches our eye or, or someone that we feel like can add unique value, we'll hire that person. But right now we haven't. I think we'll continue to go on the way we have. Um, but those guys are irreplaceable, Jerry and, and Travis. Um, and they're a big reason why we've had the success we've had. And I couldn't, I, you can't hire another Jerry, you can't hire another Travis. Um, so we'll all probably do a little more individually, and then we'll look around and see if somebody makes sense to, to add to the front office. Last one for Ramona. Hi. Bob, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. Just a, just a question about the, the schedule and rest and the way the NBA spaced things out now and Adam Silver's uh, de decision sort of say, okay, we need uh, the highest profile players playing in the highest profile games, and he has the, sort of, he has the discretion to decide punishment if they don't. What's, what's your take on, one, the, the new schedule, and two, Adam's, Adam's role in, in enforcing that? Well, thanks, Ramona. The new schedule is great. We, we really like it. Um, we're starting earlier. We're going partly because the season's starting earlier, but also we're going to China. Um, but if you look at it, I don't know if you guys have or, or for any team, it's, it's um, markedly better than last year. I mean, if you looked at our schedule last year in the games where we rested, guys, it was somewhat predictive that that might be a game where we would be extremely fatigued. You can't really look at our schedule right now and see a stretch where you would say, well, there's no way we can play our guys. So that's a huge positive. Uh, will we rest, guys? Possibly. I mean, it depends on what's going on. It depends on where we are. And that's a good question for Steve, but, but I think he's open to that idea. I don't know that it'll happen in the fashion it did last year where it's four or five guys. Um, and that's where I think Adam weighs in. Whatever we want to say, it's, this is a business, and Adam's charged with uh, presenting the NBA in the best light. And, and to be honest, we didn't enjoy not putting our best team out there. I don't think any team rests players and diminishes their chances of winning and takes it lightly. It does mean something. You want to put your best foot forward. A lot of coaches are competitive. I'm competitive. Ownership's competitive. Um, so as far as it being better and as far as Adam, I think Adam's presence in it is just conveying, look, this is important. Our fans are what drives our product. We've heard from our fans. Uh, they're disappointed. We hear from people individually when they show up at the game and they've driven miles or booked it in advance or it's a graduation presence. We, those things all land back on us, which they should. Um, so Adam's kind of taken a stance of let's make sure we're uh, intentional about this. Let's give all the teams the best chance to not rest players. Um, but I think, I, I think that's why our league's in a very good place. Uh, the NBA heard from the fans. They heard from the teams. They heard from the players. And they reacted and changed the schedule. And I think we're all going to benefit for it.